Pennsylvania, the second state to join the Union, has always played a major role in the United States, and continues to do so as one of the most populous states in the country. With enormous cities and spectacular natural areas, a major regional divide and interesting history, Pennsylvania is a fascinating state and will be the second place I will cover in this 56 part series on every state, territory, and federal district in the United States. Hello and welcome to That Is Interesting. I'm your host Carter. This is the U.S. Explained. Episode 2, Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania is nicknamed the Keystone State. A keystone is a stone located at the very center and top of an arch, which holds the structure together. Pennsylvania got this name in part due to the fact that it sat in the very center of the 13 colonies. Even today, Pennsylvania borders six states and one Canadian province, and spans multiple regions of the country. The state with the most other states bordering it has eight, so Pennsylvania still acts as a keystone in a geographic sense. The nickname is also due to the state's historical significance, as both the Declaration of Independence and U.S. Constitution were signed in Philadelphia, in addition to the city being the U.S. capital before Washington, D.C. Today, the keystone symbol is very common in Pennsylvania. You can find it all across the state on license plates, buildings, logos, and other designs. One place you won't see it though is Pennsylvania's flag, which is just a state coat of arms over a blue background. This is the case with about half the country's state flags, so if you aren't from Pennsylvania, it can definitely be difficult to recognize the flag as belonging to the state, although the presence of the horses does make it more memorable than some of the other similar state flags. The name Pennsylvania means Penn's Woods, named for its founder William Penn's father, also named William Penn. The second part of the name comes from the word sylvan, a term with Latin origin meaning wooded, a fitting name for the 13th most tree-covered state in the U.S. Another interesting fact about Pennsylvania is that it is officially called the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, a traditional term placing emphasis on the state as a community that is also used in Virginia, Kentucky, and Massachusetts. In practice, a commonwealth is no different from any other state, and has no connection to the modern organization of former British colonies. Pennsylvania takes up 46,000 square miles, or 119,000 square kilometers, placing it at number 33 in terms of area. However, many of the larger states are further to the west, so compared to some of its neighbors, Pennsylvania seems pretty large. In fact, out of the six states it borders, only New York is larger. In terms of population, Pennsylvania is one of the largest states in the country, recently surpassing Illinois to become the fifth most populous state in the US. With 12.8 million people living within its borders, only California, Texas, Florida, and New York are home to more people. It also has a pretty high population density. Despite being a decently sized state, it ranks all the way at number 9 in population density, with 248 people per square mile, or 110 per square kilometer, similar to Portugal, Slovakia, or Sierra Leone. It's located in the northeastern part of the United States, more specifically in the mid-Atlantic, bordering Ohio to the west, West Virginia to the southwest, Maryland to the south, Delaware to the southeast, New Jersey to the east, New York to the north, and sharing a water border to the northwest across Lake Erie with the Canadian province of Ontario. In fact, while Pennsylvania borders Canada, Wisconsin, the entirety of which lies completely north of Pennsylvania's northernmost point on land, does not border Canada at all, even though it sits on Lake Superior. The cities of New York, Baltimore, Cleveland, and Washington, D.C. are all pretty close to Pennsylvania as well. The state's outline was shaped by a number of border disputes with its neighbors, and even states that don't border it at all. Many of these disputes arose due to the fact that various colonies had been promised land from the Atlantic to the Pacific by Britain, even though they had no control over it. In addition, the colonies didn't fit exactly within specific latitudes. There was quite a bit of overlap, so as the colonies in later states expanded even further into Native American lands, numerous instances erupted where several lay claim to one place. Pennsylvania's shore on Lake Erie, called the Erie Triangle, came into their control after they, along with New York, Massachusetts, and Connecticut, all claimed ownership of it. The U.S. government actually settled the dispute by selling the land to Pennsylvania so it could have a coastline, as it didn't sit on the Atlantic, and before then only had a 
three mile long stretch of land on Lake Erie. Disputes between the Pens, who controlled Pennsylvania, and the Calverts, who controlled Maryland, led to the creation of the 12 mile circle, a circle centered on the courthouse in Newcastle, Delaware, which makes up the Pennsylvania Delaware border. Virginia, wanting control of the strategic forks of the Ohio, where Pittsburgh now sits, claimed much of southwestern Pennsylvania. On top of that, Connecticut claimed ownership of basically the entire northern half of the state, and almost all the lands to the west of it, all the way to the Mississippi River. In fact, Pennsylvania and Connecticut went to war over this border dispute for 30 years. For such a long war though, only three people died. Unfortunately, I don't have time to touch on every border dispute involving Pennsylvania, but this map shows the various claims different colonies had over what is today Pennsylvania at the time. Nearly all of Pennsylvania is covered in forests, with small farms and agricultural areas mixed in, with the southeastern section of the state outside of Philadelphia being especially agricultural. The Appalachian or Appalachian Mountains, the pronunciation really depends on where you're from, run northeast to southwest through the center of the state. Forested ridges with little farming communities and small cities located in the valleys in between. To the north and west of the mountains sits the Allegheny Plateau, which is at times just as high as the ridges. Rivers carve out gorges in the plateau, such as the spectacular Pine Creek Gorge in the north of the state, which is often referred to as the Grand Canyon of Pennsylvania. It also leaves much of western Pennsylvania incredibly hilly, although northwestern Pennsylvania around Erie is a flatter area, having been carved over by glaciers. Southeastern Pennsylvania, while certainly hilly, is flatter than most other parts of the state, allowing it to be home to more farmland where Pennsylvania's Amish communities thrive. Though Pennsylvania is one of the rare eastern states that does not have a coastline on the Atlantic, it does, as I've already mentioned, have a small 43 mile or 70 kilometer stretch of the Lake Erie shore. In addition, it lies very close to both the Chesapeake Bay and Delaware Bays, and the section of the Delaware River near Pennsylvania's border with Delaware is essentially a tidal area, sitting at sea level. However, if you want to understand Pennsylvania, the most important thing to know are its three major river systems, which together drain nearly the entire state, and along which sit many of the state's largest cities. In the east is the Delaware River. The Delaware begins in the Catskill Mountains of New York and flows south, making up the entirety of Pennsylvania's western border with New Jersey. At one point, it leaves the valley it is flowing through and cuts straight through a mountain ridge in what's known as the Delaware Water Gap. The river grows very wide down near the border with Delaware, with Philadelphia, Pennsylvania's largest city, and the core of the fifth largest urban area in the U.S., home to 5.4 million people, sitting on its shores. In addition to Philly, smaller eastern PA cities such as Allentown, the third largest urban area in the state, home to over half a million people, Bethlehem, once a major center of steel production, and Reading, once a major railroad city, sit on tributaries of the enormous waterway. The main artery of central Pennsylvania is the Susquehanna River, formed from two branches, one starting in New York and one in Pennsylvania, to meet in the town of Northumberland and flow south into Maryland, where it forms the Chesapeake Bay just 15 miles downstream from the Pennsylvania border. Small cities and large towns like Altoona, Scranton, formerly a center of the American coal industry, where the office takes place and the birthplace of Joe Biden, the nearby Wilkes-Barre or Wilkes-Barre, I've heard both, if you're from there, let me know if there's a consensus, Williamsport, Lancaster, York, and of course the capital city of Harrisburg, all sit on either the Susquehanna or one of its tributaries. State College, the home of Penn State University, also sits in its watershed. Finally, in western Pennsylvania, we have the Ohio River. The Ohio is formed from the confluence of the Allegheny River, which cuts through much of western Pennsylvania, and the Monongahela, which flows north from West Virginia. The two rivers meet in downtown Pittsburgh, forming an impressive headwaters for one of the Mississippi River's largest tributaries. Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania's other major city besides Philadelphia, is itself home to over 1.7 million people in its urban area, making it by that standard the 27th largest city in the US. In addition, smaller cities and towns like Johnstown, the location of the deadliest flood in US history, Uniontown, a former coal and steel center, Indiana, a center of Christmas tree farming, Punxsutawney, famous for the celebration of Groundhog Day, and Greensburg, a fast-growing city not far from Pittsburgh, all sit within the watershed of the Ohio River. Despite the hilly topography of Pennsylvania, these three important rivers have helped Pennsylvania gain such a large population, 
providing important waterways leading to both the East Coast and Midwest, and connecting the state culturally with both regions, as well as allowing it to become a giant of industry. Philadelphia and Pittsburgh are both major urban areas, but the rural parts of Pennsylvania located in between are not as rural as most western states like Montana and North Dakota. There were many small and medium-sized cities in between, and in much of the state it's just a short drive from one small town to the next, and many rural counties are actually home to hundreds of thousands of people. In fact, add up the population of just six rural counties in southeastern Pennsylvania, and you'll get a population of over two million people. The one part of the state that is really sparsely populated is the north central section, where the Pennsylvania Grand Canyon is located. The region is home to the Allegheny National Forest, Susquehannock State Forest, and other protected areas. Hunting is huge in Pennsylvania, so interestingly enough, many of the state parks allow it during certain times of the year, and there are still many small towns tucked in the various valleys and gorges of northern PA. Pennsylvania was originally home to numerous indigenous peoples. The area around the Delaware River was home to the Lenape, also known as the Delaware, who lived from what is today Delaware through Pennsylvania, New Jersey, New York, all the way to Connecticut. In the center of the state lived the Susquehannock and Iroquoian people. The area around the Lake Erie coast was home to the Erie and other Iroquoian people, as well as the Mississauga. The Haudenosaunee, also known as the Iroquois Confederacy, an alliance of several Iroquoian-speaking peoples in what is now upstate New York, controlled sections of what is now northern Pennsylvania. The Shawnee, Osage, and Massawamek all inhabited southwestern Pennsylvania around what is now Pittsburgh, with the Osage living in much of the Ohio Valley, and the Shawnee and Massawamek in Appalachia. The Erie were nearly wiped out in war with the Iroquois Confederacy, and most survivors were either assimilated into the Susquehannock or to the Iroquois Confederacy. The Susquehannock were decimated by smallpox and faced attacks by both the Iroquois Confederacy as well as European settlers and today, no Susquehannock people remain. Most Lenape were forced west to Oklahoma, as were the Osage and Shawnee, after first being pushed into what is now Kansas, Nebraska, and Arkansas. Many members of different Iroquois nations still live in upstate New York, as well as Wisconsin, Oklahoma, and Ontario. If you watch my video on Delaware, you'll know that the area around what is now Philadelphia was initially colonized by Sweden, who settled the area with Finnish and Swedish settlers, as well as the Netherlands, who soon took control of the Swedish settlements. Britain, however, conquered New Netherland and began splitting it into different colonies controlled by various wealthy aristocratic British families. Charles II, the British king, owed what is now 2.1 million pounds or 2.7 million dollars to a British politician named William Penn, who had died 11 years earlier. So he paid it off by giving Penn's son, also named William, a Quaker writer, a large chunk of New Netherland west of the Delaware River, naming it Pennsylvania. Penn founded as its capital the city of Philadelphia, which grew to become the largest city in the 13 colonies and implemented forms of democratically elected government. It was founded on the ideals of the Quakers, a denomination of Christianity whose values had a strong influence on colonial Pennsylvania. It became a haven of religious freedom relative to most other colonies besides Rhode Island, which tended to be set aside for only members of a specific denomination. Penn also placed great emphasis on respecting treaties with native people, and many Quakers spoke out against slavery, although it didn't start to be banned in the state until 1780, and even then only gradually, with some people still living in slavery in Pennsylvania in the beginning of the 1800s. A dispute between Britain and France over the forks of the Ohio a key strategic location in the Ohio Valley led to the outbreak of the Seven Years' War, also known as the French and Indian War, with Britons destroying the French Fort Duquesne and replacing it with a fort called Fort Pitt. A town soon grew up around the fort at the confluence of the Allegheny and Monongahela called Pittsburgh. Unable to pay off their debts from that conflict, Britain levied numerous new taxes on the American colonists, leading to frustration that ultimately resulted in the American Revolution. As one of the most populous British colonies, Pennsylvania played a key role in the American Revolution. Pennsylvanians like John Dickinson and Benjamin Franklin were instrumental in the founding of the United States, and Philadelphia was of course the meeting place of the two Continental Congresses, whose members wrote and signed the Declaration of Independence and later the Constitutional Convention, who created the US Constitution in Philadelphia's Independence Hall. The state was the second to ratify the Constitution, doing so on December 12, 1787, 
just five days after Delaware, the first state to do so. During the war, Lancaster and York both briefly served as the US capital when Philadelphia was under threat from the British, and Philadelphia was the capital city from 1790 until the creation of Washington, D.C. George Washington's famous crossing of the Delaware happened in Bucks County, PA. During the Civil War, Pennsylvania remained with the Union, but sat at the border of Union-controlled territory, bordering at the time of Virginia, which had joined the Confederacy. As the southernmost free state in the Mid-Atlantic, it was a key destination for black Americans escaping slavery via the Underground Railroad. The town of Gettysburg in the south central part of the state was the site of the most famous battle of the Civil War and the bloodiest of US history, the Battle of Gettysburg, which saw the Union prevent the Confederacy from pushing through the North, strongly diminishing the chances that the Union would be defeated. The battle has of course been immortalized in one of the most famous speeches in American history, Abraham Lincoln's Gettysburg Address. Following the war and the discovery of oil in the northwestern Pennsylvania town of Titusville, the state grew into a major center of industry and manufacturing. Immigrants flocked to Pennsylvania for jobs in the booming oil, steel, and coal industries, and Pittsburgh magnates like Andrew Carnegie, Andrew Mellon, and Henry Clay Frick became some of the wealthiest people on earth. Companies like U.S. Steel and Bethlehem Steel were major employers in the state. Though U.S. Steel is still a major company, overall these manufacturing industries have since been in decline, which has been damaging to the state's economy, and today much of the country stretching from Wisconsin to upstate New York is known as the Rust Belt. In 1889, a dam at a resort for some of Pennsylvania's wealthy elite broke, sending floodwaters downstream, destroying much of Johnstown, and killing over 2,000 people. In 1979, a nuclear meltdown occurred on Three Mile Island, just outside of Harrisburg. Thankfully, no one was killed, but since then, the US has been very skeptical of nuclear energy. During the 9-11 attacks, Flight 93 crashed in a field outside of Shanksville, Pennsylvania, which is now home to a memorial for the victims. Today, Pennsylvania is becoming more diverse. Black Americans make up over 10% of Pennsylvania's population, and it has a growing population of Latinos, mostly from Puerto Rico, as well as Asian Americans. In addition, you can't talk about Pennsylvania without mentioning the Pennsylvania Dutch, who are actually descendants of German, not Dutch, settlers. While many Pennsylvanians have German ancestry, members of some religious groups in southeastern and south central Pennsylvania around Lancaster County, such as the Brethren, Mennonites, and most famously the Amish, still speak a dialect of German, called Pennsylvania German or Pennsylvania Dutch. The Amish maintain a traditional way of life, choosing not to use modern technology such as cars, phones, or electricity, wearing traditional clothing, using a horse and buggy for transportation, and leading a rural lifestyle involving impressive community projects such as barn raisings. While the largest Amish community in Pennsylvania is located in the area around Lancaster County, you can find Amish communities all over the state, as well as in neighboring states like Ohio and much of the Midwest. In addition, the large number of German settlers to Pennsylvania has led the suffix Berg to become very common throughout the state. Most states don't have too many towns ending in Berg, but Pennsylvania has over 60. Just glance at a map of the state and all the Bergs will be hard to miss. A key part of Pennsylvania is the rivalry between the eastern and western parts of the state. Each is anchored by a major city, Philadelphia in the east and Pittsburgh in the west, and the presence of the Appalachians creates a geographic divide, with eastern Pennsylvania being, at least in the southeast part of the state, more agricultural and flat than the hilly west of the state. The presence of a major city on each side, both near the borders with other states, leaves Pittsburgh very close to states like West Virginia and Ohio, while Philadelphia's suburbs stretch into Delaware and New Jersey. You can see this divide in the sports teams Pennsylvanians root for, the types of local food they eat, as well as the differences in their accent and dialect. If you've seen my maps video, you'll know about Sheets vs. Wawa, an intense rivalry between two Pennsylvania convenience stores that each command incredibly loyal followings. Wawa dominates Philadelphia and parts of eastern Pennsylvania, along with New Jersey, Delaware, Baltimore, and other parts of the east coast, along with, I've been told, central Florida. Sheets, meanwhile, reigns over Pittsburgh, western PA, and most of the rural parts of Pennsylvania and some nearby states. As you can tell from this map, they do not cross into one another's territory, with the exception of in Richmond, Virginia. Philadelphia is a really cool city. The urban core of eastern Pennsylvania and the fifth largest urban area in the country, it's a great place if you love history, having played a key role in the American Revolution. 
It's home to places like Independence Hall, where the Declaration of Independence and Constitution were debated and agreed upon, and the famous Liberty Bell, which has become a symbol of the city, the state, and even the country. If you like architecture, the city has a beautiful modern skyline, as well as old historic buildings like the spectacular Philadelphia City Hall, which is probably one of the most amazing buildings in the country, and features a statue of William Penn on top that is 36 feet tall and weighs 53,000 pounds. Philadelphia also has a unique accent, visible in how residents pronounce the word water, water. Some famous foods include water ice, which is similar to Italian ice and is very refreshing, soft pretzels, and of course the cheesesteak. Probably many of you have had a cheesesteak before, but honestly the other cheesesteaks I've eaten just don't compare to eating a cheesesteak from Philly. Definitely check out the Reading Terminal Market, a massive indoor market sitting in an old train station. Philadelphia is a big city and can be pretty sprawling, so it's not as walkable compared to some other places. It's also very close to Delaware and New Jersey, and so cities like Wilmington and Trenton sort of act like satellite cities. On the other side of the state, you have Pittsburgh. Now, I'm biased because I used to live there, but Pittsburgh is a really amazing city. Its location on the Three Rivers gives it some spectacular scenery. Downtown sits right on the point formed by the confluence of the Allegheny and Monongahela, and its skyline is home to some really unique buildings, like the U.S. Steel Building and PPG Place. It's also home to the Cathedral of Learning located at the University of Pittsburgh, which is the tallest academic building in the U.S. and the fourth tallest in the world. It's a beautiful structure with sweeping views of downtown Pittsburgh and western Pennsylvania, and has rooms inside modeled after traditional classrooms in different countries across the world. The hilly geography of western Pennsylvania, along with the many rivers that cut through the city, has given it 446 bridges, among the most on earth, and it has these things called inclines, which are basically cable cars that go up some of the city's steep hills, providing amazing views. Not far away is Falling Water, a house designed by architect Frank Lloyd Wright that sits on top of a waterfall. A center of the American coal and steel industry in the 1800s, Pittsburgh is one of the rare Rust Belt cities that has turned around and is thriving, with schools like Carnegie Mellon helping turn it into a major center of science and technology. Some local foods include pierogies, a type of Polish dumpling, as well as the Primani Brothers sandwich, a sandwich that has fries inside. Pittsburgh also has its own unique accent and dialect sometimes referred to as Pittsburghese, with terms like yins, the Pittsburgh way of saying you guys or y'all. The one other city I'll talk about is Harrisburg, although Pennsylvania has many other small cities like Allentown, Erie, Scranton, Reading, York, and Lancaster. The state's capital, Harrisburg, sits on the Susquehanna River in south central Pennsylvania. Like many small cities in Pennsylvania, it has a decent sized downtown with numerous multi story buildings. The state capital, located there, is one of the most spectacular in the country, with an impressive interior, grounds, and a beautiful green dome. All across Pennsylvania, the sandwich most Americans refer to as a sub is called a hoagie, and the state's roads are known for having lots of potholes. There are many large companies located in the state. Some include Aramark, Comcast, PNC, Rite Aid, Alcoa, Heinz, Hershey, whose headquarters have developed into a decent sized town, and Universal Health Services. Politically, Pennsylvania is considered a swing state. The presence of union manufacturing towns in two large progressive cities, coupled with a heavily populated conservative rural area, sometimes jokingly referred to as Pennsylvania, has led voting margins in the state to be very close in recent elections. As the fifth most populous state in the country, Pennsylvania has a high number of electoral votes, and having swung in different directions in past couple elections, victories in Pennsylvania have often proved decisive at determining the election's winner, making it a highly coveted state for presidential candidates. Some notable people born in or from Pennsylvania include Joe Biden, Will Smith, Fred Rogers, James Buchanan, Taylor Swift, Kobe Bryant, Andy Warhol, and really too many people to name, including me. I tried to be pretty thorough with this video, but there was a lot to go over about Pennsylvania, so I am sure there are things I missed. I really want to thank everyone from Pennsylvania who helped give me information for this episode. Last I checked, something like 66 of you had sent me information with the state on the community post, and others had on the Delaware video. This would not have been possible without all your help. The next video in this series will be on New Jersey. I haven't spent too much time in New Jersey, so if you're from there, please respond to the latest community post and let me know what you'd like to see included about your home state. 
I also recently created a Discord server. Several of you have already joined, and it'll be a good place to continue conversations about the topics discussed in these videos, interact with fellow viewers, and help provide information about upcoming states in this series. In addition, I've created a Patreon, where you can access different things such as behind the scenes videos, an exclusive Discord Q&A with me, ad free content, and shout outs in my videos. Thank you to those of you who have already joined the Patreon. I'll put links to both the Patreon and the Discord in the comments. Thank you for watching this video and I hope you learned something new. Subscribe for more content like this. I cover the countries, cities, people, and places of the world and beyond. These videos will leave you saying, that is interesting.